Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it. And thanks, everybody, for that. That was, it was super kind. Uh, really, really appreciate it. Um, yes, it is my birthday today. And uh, big monumental year, 38. Everybody knows that that's a big number. It's a big year. Uh, so I'm, I'm excited to see what... Um, so, you know, it's just a countdown to 40, right? You know what I mean? It's like another year is 40. Yeah. We digress. Anyway, back to fun things. Um, thank you guys for the birthday wishes. I appreciate it. Um, and uh, there is no better birthday gift that I could get than what is going to happen today. Because uh, today is Baptism Sunday. And in a couple minutes, we're going to have a whole bunch of people that are going to come out here and they're going to profess publicly what God has done in their lives privately, and it is going to be awesome. It's going to be one massive party in this place, and we can't be, we can't, uh, be even more excited than we already are about what's happening. And there was already baptisms at the first service, and so we're joining in with what's going on already. Um, some of you guys have already been registered for uh, baptism, and you were given your shirt, and you know you, you've been told everything you need to do, and so it's going to be awesome. Uh, at the end of, of, of this little message, uh, short message today, I'm going to ask you guys to rise to your feet and go to the back of the room. Uh, but here's something cool that I think uh, is going to happen today too. There are some of you guys that didn't register for baptism, and by the end of this uh, so, a small sermon, you're actually going to feel a calling, a nudge, a pull to get baptized too. And so when we get to that point about standing to your feet, uh, I'm going to give you permission today to rise to your feet also to get baptized. Because guess what? We have everything you're going to need. Shirts, shorts, towels, and hugs. And it's going to be awesome. And so uh, at, the end of the, at the end of this, I believe uh, that there are some of you guys in the room that you didn't plan on it, you didn't think about it, uh, but you know today is a day of salvation, and you're going to go public with your faith. And so today is my birthday, but today is going to be your rebirth day. And so it's going to be awesome. Um, and then we also have a little teeny weeny announcement that we want to share with you guys uh, that we're really excited about too. Uh, but we'll get to that in just a couple minutes. Uh, let me share a verse with you this morning. It's going to frame our, uh, our time together today. Uh, it's out of the book of Galatians 5, chapter 1. Today is the last day of our freedom series. And uh, for those that didn't know, we actually had our freedom conference uh, this past weekend, Friday and Saturday. Anybody in here go to freedom conference this weekend? Yeah. And let me just brag on y'all for a second. Epic rolled in squad deep. We were deep in there, and it was the entire half of the room was just epic people. So props to y'all for showing up big time. But here's the cool thing. God showed up big time in your life, too. I, it, it, didn't it happen? You did, just someplace in there, God showed up and did a work in your heart. For some of you guys, it was all day. I saw you guys with the tissue boxes just straight up in your hand, just like, this is just going to be my tissue box. You guys can find another one. <laughs> and so uh, it was awesome to see what God had done in your life. And so we're wrapping this 13-week seri uh, week, uh, series up on freedom today with baptism because uh, this is what God has, has been doing in our lives, in our hearts, is, is freedom. He's been freeing us uh, from the past, from what, we were, uh, what, what the enemy tried to use to take us out with. And uh, we're going to celebrate that, celebrate what Jesus has done in our life. And I love how this verse puts it, Galatians 5, the first verse, Paul writing to the church there. He says, look, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. Let's pray. God, thank you for what you're doing in our hearts. Thank you for what, that what you're giving us, God, this beautiful freedom that we have in you. God, we're here to celebrate it and, and, and to lift you up, not just the freedom in you, but you. God, we get to have a relationship with you, the God of the universe. Lord, we thank you for it. We're going to praise you. We're going to live our lives for you. Lord, we're going to tell the world how good you are today. Now, we lift all these things up. Pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, you guys know what freedom feels like, right? 
Uh, a couple weeks ago, I had to go uh, and get my daughter London out of school early. And so I, I went, and it was about 1 o'clock, I think, and I went to the school office and said, I'm here to pick up London. And, and so they call out on the intercom, uh, please send down London Lockamy for early dismissal. And I had never been on that side of it because I remember when I was in elementary school and my parents came to get me out for early dismissal. Anybody remember that feeling, right? You're packing your stuff up and you're looking at your friends like, suckers. Y'all got to be here for two more hours, but I don't, right? And you kind of strut your way out of class a little bit. I'm out of here. And it wasn't it weird to be out of school during school time, you know? You're like, man, I don't even know what it's like out here. Look, this is crazy. I don't know what to do with myself. Like, I don't know what to do with my hands, you know? Like, this is, there's things out here, and it just felt so new and fresh and free, you know? We all know what that feeling is. Maybe it was the last day of school, you know, uh, at the end of the year before summertime, and you you just, you know, you throw all your papers in the air, like, I don't need these anymore. I'm out of here, you know, except for when you had summer school and you had to go pick them back up, you know. (laughs) I need these. (laughs) Or maybe as an adult, it's like Friday at 5 before the weekend. You're like, I'm out of this place. Or maybe paying off a credit card or a car or a house. Or maybe just dropping the kids off at the grandparents' house. You know that feeling of freedom, like, I'll be back at 5 or never. I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Woo! Just kidding. I'll be back at 10. <laughs> you know what I mean? We all know what the feeling of freedom is. And, and, and freedom is something that affects every human being across the face of the earth. And something that I learned from this verse, reading it through, is, is that we all need freedom. The first thing that I learned from this verse is this. We need it. We were all born into a place needing freedom. And we know the different types of freedom. There's political freedom. There's occupational freedom, right? We, you know, where you want a job that gives you a little space to think, a little space to breathe. You can show up at 9.15 and you're not getting your pay docked. You know, like you need a little, just a little freedom in your life. Well, we also know that there is a spiritual freedom that we need in this world. And here's the thing. Every human on the face of the earth was born into this life not having that freedom, meaning they were born into bondage. We were all born into a place of spiritual slavery. And because we had that spiritual bondage, it led into other places of bondage and and lack of freedom. And mentally, emotionally, even physically, we found that bondage work its way into our life one way or the other. We all need freedom. I think about the children of Israel. They got a promise that they were going to get this land. They called it the promised land. And they knew that one day they were going to get there. But they were living in Egypt year after year, generation after generation. And I imagine hearing the parents say, hey, I know this is where we live, but this is not home. We were created for something more. And so I want to tell you today, if you don't have that freedom in Christ, this way may be where you're currently living, but it's not home. You were created for something more. You were created for freedom in Christ. So here's the thing, across the board, we all need this freedom, and here's the beautiful thing, freedom is possible. I don't know what you're carrying with you, what addiction has told you that you're going to have it forever, what problem you think will never go away. I want to tell you, in Jesus, freedom is possible. I don't care what it is, freedom is possible in Jesus. That's the hope of it. Second thing we learned from this is that, I love how Paul worded it, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. There is no ulterior motive to Jesus' freedom. He just wants his sons and daughters to live free. That's how he created you, how he designed you. He wants you to live in freedom. It was God's will. Do you know how many times I get the question asked, God, uh, Pastor Chris, what is God's will for my life? Should I buy that car? Should I go to that school? Do I go to that neighborhood? Do I move to that place? Do I date that girl? Do I marry that guy? Do I order a uh, number five with cinnamon twist? Uh, or do I order a number three and just keep it the huge? Like, what is, what's God's will? What does God want from me? I don't know. In any of those situations, I have no clue. I don't know why you asked me. It's above my pay grade. I don't know. But I do know this, God's will for your life is freedom. And so if the decision in front of you leads you away from freedom in Christ, that ain't God's will. God's will for us is freedom. It is for freedom that Christ set us free. It just speaks to how good God is. Third thing I see in this verse is that he says, so stand firm then. 
You've been set free by Jesus, so stand firm. Two actions. Standing is a position of proactivity, not reactively sitting back, waiting, rolling back on our heels. No, no, no. Standing tall in the freedom that you have been given. For those who have been set free in this series by Jesus, you need to be standing tall, telling the world, I'm not going back anymore. Stand firm. There's a firm foundation that you and I need to be standing on. See, here's the thing. Getting free and staying free are two different things. Getting free is a place where you feel that's the early dismissal. Ah, I'm out of here. But guess what? Tomorrow morning you got to go back, you know? Some of us are scared to death to end this season, this series of freedom, because we're, we feel that we're going to have to go back to that old way of life. You don't have to go back. Paul says stand firm on a firm foundation. We should be proactively standing in the freedom that God has been giving us. A couple quick tips. How do we stay free? We've gotten free through Jesus. We talked about all that living between two trees. It's all about the heart, realizing that we are a vessel that God wants to use for great things. How do we stay free? And this list could go on and on and on. I'll give you five quick things. Number one, how to stay free? We need to go public with it. Some of you guys need to be texting a friend or a family member for coffee this week to sit down and to tell them what God has done in your life. Stop keeping it to yourself. You need to go public with it. Tell the world what God has done in your heart. Don't keep it quiet. I mean, this is like Jesus' early stuff. He's like, who takes a lamp and, put, and hides it? Nobody does that. You put it up high so the world could see it. Christ has lit a light inside of you that the world has been trying to extinguish since the day you were born. Let's let it shine bright, right? Let's crank it up. Some of us need to go public, maybe face-to-face. -face. Some of us need to go public by going, posting it on social or something. Some of us need to go public by getting in this pool right here this morning and tell the world what Jesus has done in your heart. And here's the cool thing. Every time we do this, we have this great video crew that comes in and, and helps us capture this. And just in a few short days, they kick me back this video that we start posting on social. And you can share the heck out of it and tell them the world what happened. Like, wait, 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 wait. It's, it's one minute and 35 seconds. That's me. That's me. Watch, 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 watch. <laughs> Come up in water, slow motion. Shh. <laughs> and you're like, that's me. That's me. Screenshot. Boom. It's my new wallpaper. Um, that's, that's it. I'm sticking right there. Some of you guys need to pu go public in here and then tell the world with it, with what happened. They may not be here this morning, but they can still see what God's done in your life. First thing to stay free is to go public. Second is group life. Get in a group. Some of you guys think that living in, 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 with a group, with living with people over a series of time just happened during freedom. No, 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 no. Guess what? We get to do this all the time. Just because freedom group then, it doesn't mean a group life ends, right? It's a way of life. And so some of you guys need to get back into a group in the spring. And some of y'all need to get in a group, period. You miss the entire freedom group thing. You're like, hey, I'm just showing up on Sundays. That's just my thing. I'm, I'm, I'm not all about that, you know, going to somebody's house, this stuff. That's not, it's not for me. That's for you. No, no, no. It's for you, too. <laughs> Stay free. Some of y'all need to get into a group. Thirdly, we need to go to the next level. Take a next step. Continue to grow and allow God to do something in your heart. Fourthly, how do you take that next step if you don't know what it is? Go to Empowerment Track. Nothing uh, in empowerment happening through December, but when it comes around in January, jump in there. It's a great three-week thing to find out how, who you are and what your next step specific to you really is. Continue to grow. Don't just be free and stop here because that's a perfect uh, setup for going backwards, to go back and, and not do what, what, what Paul told us to. No, no, don't, don't go backwards. Stand firm. Continue to grow in your freedom. We do that through empowerment. Fifthly and finally, how to stay free by renewing your mind. We spend so much time in Scripture finding out who we are in Christ. Some of us, to, to renew our mind, we need to turn off those old voices. Some of those old, old voices come in the form of, of, of TV, Netflix. There's that one Netflix show you know that you shouldn't be watching, you know? I, I don't know which it is for you, but you know what it is. Every time you turn it on, it, that's that old life starts coming out. You know what I mean? Just that little, that old street side of you starts to come out. You get a little gritty, you know what I mean? You're talking to your family. What, what, what? You're watching The Wire again, aren't you? Like, you don't, you got a trench coat. You're just kind of like strolling around the house. Anyway, that's too, that's too, 
I took that too far. Some of you just need to turn those old voices down. Some of you it's a show. Some of you it's a group of friends. Uh, it, it could be anything, but we need to learn to turn that old voice down and turn up that new voice, that voice of Jesus in our hearts and our lives. Continue to get in the word. Fourth thing I learned from this verse, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. It was Jesus who did it. No song, no podcast, no organization, no book. It wasn't, it wasn't the lights. It wasn't the band. It wasn't, it's not even the baptism that saves you. It's not the water that saves you. It's Jesus who saves you. It's Christ who gives you the freedom that you need. It's him. And so I want to talk in this last few minutes before we, we, we move on to the next thing about the doctrine of party. All right, now you're not going to find this in Martin Luther's study or John Calvin's, you know, stuff. This is kind of originated in this room, okay, the doctrine of party. See, here's the thing. Jesus went to a lot of parties. He was always on the guest list. Actually, the party followed Jesus. Now, for some of us, our definition of party needs to change a little bit because Jesus didn't go to party like we, we used to party, you know what I mean? But he was all about celebrating. And, and I want to I explain what the doctrine of party it is. It's this. Jesus celebrated because he was about the work of freedom, which is worthy of celebrating. That's the party that Jesus was all about. Luke 19 illustrates this perfectly. He's a guy named Zacchaeus. He's a shorter guy. He, he was, he was uh, you know... He was challenged in his height a little bit. And so as the crowd's coming, he can't see over uh, these people. So he climbs up a sycamore tree, and he's watching. And, and I love Jesus. Jesus is a baller. He's walking. He's like, hey, what's going on? And he's like, well, who, me? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, you're the only guy in the tree. Yeah, I'm talking to you. And he goes, you know what, Zach? We're going to your house. I love that. Jesus just invited himself over to Zacchaeus' house. I hope he didn't have laundry out. You know, like, I hope it wasn't fold day. He's like, we're coming to your place. And guess what? This whole crew is coming with me. I love it. Who's coming with me? Everybody is. And so they go to Zacchaeus' house, and there's this party breaks out. And here's the thing. The Jews would look at Zacchaeus as a tax collector. He would be the scum of the earth. He would be subhuman, not just not a Jew and not just a normal human being. He actually played both sides. He worked for the Romans and would tax the Jews and would get rich off of extorting Jewish people. And so the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the religious elite, would look at him and say, you are less than human. You're not a son of Abraham. You're not a Jew. You are the scum of the earth. That's how they would view Zacchaeus. And I love how Jesus uh, shows up here at, at this place and there's a party happening in Zacchaeus' house. Luke 19, 9 and 10 says, Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because this man, Zacchaeus, too, is a son of Abraham. Verse 10, he says, for the son of man, Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. That's what Jesus is about then and that's what he's about today. See, the enemy has been telling some of you guys in this room that you're not a son and daughter of God. You're actually an embarrassment to the family of Jesus. The enemy's been telling you, you just need to stay away. Don't let, don't let people know what you've been up to. You need to maybe remove a couple friends because if they saw the places you were checking in at, the people you were posting selfies with, they would look down on you. Some of you have been thinking that you are a second-class citizen in the house of God. You need to live out in the shed. You're not allowed in the house anymore. But let me tell you, that's a lie. You, too, are a son and daughter of Jesus, <laughs> worthy of celebrating. And so Jesus wouldn't party with sinners just to party in the hopes of connecting with them or having a good time. No, no, no. It was in the hopes of showing them that there is a better celebration that they have been missing out on. See, the world's party is a fake, false counterfeit for the party of Jesus. Getting crunk, lit, throwing down, turn up, all that. Psh, psh, psh. <laughs> That ain't nothing compared to the party that Jesus has for you. Because the party that Jesus has is true. It's full of a true inheritance. It's beautiful inside and out. It's one of true love, not fake acceptance. Hey, what's going on? How's work? It's good. All right. Cool. Pfft, get out of here. That ain't a real party. I don't know where in the world that came from. Please tell me not to do that next time. <laughs> Whatever that was. That's all I got to work with. Yeah, I just want to tell you. I, I, I got to keep going. I got to keep going. Luke 15, 
My favorite chapter, I'll share this and then we'll, we'll move forward. Luke 15, Jesus is telling a story about uh, the, the, this, this family. And it's a story that he's making up, but he, he's trying to use it to illustrate the heart of God, the heart of the Father, the heart of Jesus himself. And it's about this prodigal son that takes his inheritance from his father, and he goes out and he spends it in wild living, out there looking for the real party out there in a distant country. But he realizes that party ends in, in, in disaster. It ends in isolation. It ends up where he has no friends. He has no, no, no one out there with him. He's nothing. Uh, there's no celebration anymore. The music has stopped. And he's out there and he realizes, you know what, there are, there are hired men in my father's house that, that live better than I'm living right now. This is no party. I remember what the good living was about in my father's house. I remember how it used to be. I'm going to go back and see if he'll just let me, let me stand on the sidelines. Maybe, he'll, maybe Pastor Chris will just let me kind of hang out in the shadows. I don't need to be on leadership team. I don't need to be in the front row. I don't, I don't need to be on stage. Maybe, maybe I can just go to Epic and kind of stand in the back. I love this story, Luke 15. says, the son, starting at verse 20, says, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, threw his arms around him, and he kissed him. Verse 21, the son said to the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Jesus wants to put his best on you today. I read that this morning and something quickened in me. He wants to put his best on you. And you know what his best is? It's his own blood he wants to cover you with. He wants to make you perfect again. He wants to cleanse you of every sin, every wrong that's ever been done. He wants to cover you with his best. And that best was shed on the cross. Mm. Bring the best robe and put it on him. Put, the, put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. He's no longer a slave. Put some shoes on that dude. Give him a pair of Sperry's, man. Get him to just slip in. Let's go. I ain't got time for all this. I'm sorry, but every time I read this, man, it just keeps popping out, you know. Woo. Put some sandals on his feet. Verse 23, bring the fatty calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and what? Celebrate. Party. Yes. Ah. Mine's like those Brazilian, like, vuvuzelas or whatever. Remember that World Cup? That was the worst. Shut up. You know? <laughs> I'm off the rails. I got to get back. Here we go. Verse 24. He says, for this son, he didn't say he was a slave. He didn't say he was a servant. He didn't say he was, I'm just going to let this guy in. He's second class. I don't know what he called him. This son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost, and now he's found. So they began to celebrate. Jesus is about the work of freedom, and that's worth celebrating. <laughs> so the father welcomes him home. And the son really, he starts to realize that, that this is the real party. This is the real celebration in the house of the father. See, this party is a, is a reunion. It's a party of life. It's a party of salvation, a party of freedom. There's true inheritance. There's not just monetary inheritance. The true inheritance is being in relationship with the Father. It's a family. It's identity. It's honor. It's everlasting love. That's the party that's happening in the house of God. The prodigal had to come home to experience the true party. He had to leave a distant country, travel maybe dozens, hundreds maybe thousands of miles to return back to the house of the Father. Here's the good news. For those of us in this room, we don't have to make the journey of a dozen miles or a hundred miles or a thousand miles. Coming back home, you can do it right where you are, seated in that chair. It can happen just when you say, okay, Jesus, I'm in. Scripture says you can believe with your heart and confess with your mouth, and you are saved. You can actually return home in the seat that you're sitting right now. Freedom can happen today. Salvation can happen to this house right where you are. If I could give you my own translation for our first verse in Galatians chapter 5, in light of what we had just read, my edit, my version, I, I, I like to say it like this. It is for freedom that the Father 
speaking to you, says, I have raised you as a free son, as a free daughter. So come home. Stay home. Don't let yourself go back to that old life of brokenness, bondage, and burden. And so I would would challenge you today to come home. I'm going to ask you to take a posture of prayer across the room, heads bowed, eyes closed. So we're getting ready to step into baptism. It's going to be awesome. I believe there are some people in this room that are going to be born again right here, right now, in this moment. And today is going to be your rebirth day. You're going to make the trek, the journey to come back home into the arms of the Father right where you are. The second, we're all going to pray. Everybody across the room. But when we pray this morning, if you mean it, if that's you this morning and and, and you want to come home, when you pray these words, I want you to pray them with meaning. I want you to mean them from the depth of your soul. And I'm going to ask everybody in the room to pray this, whether you've prayed it a thousand times or today's your first time. I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, thank you for your freedom. Thank you for going to the cross for me. I admit that I'm a sinner and I need forgiveness. And today I receive your grace, your mercy. Come into my heart and make me new. Today I am free. I am brand new. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's celebrate this morning. All right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to put this verse into practice right now. Some of you guys are sitting firm. I'm going to ask you to stand firm. See what I did there? Some of you guys come in this morning and think it was going to be just another Sunday. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did see something about an announcement. I forgot. That's why everybody's around. I forgot. I didn't know what was going on. Some of you guys came in and think it was just going to be a normal day, but the Holy Spirit surprised you, and you feel him on the inside saying, you know what? Today's the day where you take your next step. Today's the day where you step up and you allow Jesus to do something new in you like never before. You didn't think you were going to get baptized today, but God has different plans, and you know what I'm talking about. And so here's what I'm going to do. On the count of three, I'm going to ask everybody who is registered for baptism to stand to their feet. And while they're standing, I'm going to ask everybody in this room, whether you are registered or not, but if you want to be baptized today, if you let Christ in your heart and you want to show the world, tell the world what's happening, I want you to stand at the same time too. And so in this moment, we're going to practice standing to our feet and going public with our faith. And guess what's awesome, man? We got like 12 or 13 people already going to get baptized. But guess what? We got everything you need. We got shirts, we got shorts, we got towels, we got hugs, we got everything you're going to need to have this thing happen here today. So I don't care what the, 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 what the barrier is, we're going to do it. Y'all ready? Is everybody ready? And man, when they stand to their feet, if you're not standing out, you need to be shouting to the top of your lungs. You guys ready? On the count of three, whether you're registered or not, here we go. One, two, three. Stand up. Let's make this thing happen. Yeah. I see you, I see you. Hey, hey, preacher man, do you mind if I borrow that mic? You been talking about it, everybody got a story. Yeah. Here is mine. I was so lost, I was so lost, but now all right, all right, all right. All right. Here's what we're going to do. If you're standing, I want you to go this way. If you're standing, I want you to go towards those people right over there. Man, how awesome. Come on now. Come on, somebody. All right, this is going to be awesome today. While they're getting ready for baptism, I'm going to welcome my lovely wife out here, Pastor Lori. And we're going to share some awesome news with you guys. You guys, you guys want to hear a cool announcement? Yeah. yeah. I think you're good. I'm on? Yeah. Hi. Hi. I just, uh, before we announce, I just want to thank everybody. I I know um, a couple Sundays ago I had a stroke, and um, it's a miracle that I'm even here and that I am able to function. And it's, it's because of prayer. It is because people all over the world, all thank God for social media, was just praying and just standing, and I was able, they were able to catch the stroke within three hours, so they gave me this shot. I didn't know if I was dying or, or not, 
because a priest came in and, and pretty much like took me through some prayer and said, hey, if you're going to sign this paper, I think you should pray with me. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. God's going to heal me. And so um, through that shot, it protected a lot of my brain. And I'm a miracle today. And with God, all things are possible. And I just want to encourage you today, no matter where you're at, no matter what you're going through, I know there's people that are battling cancer, battling sickness, battling financial things, battling depression. I need to tell you that our God is possible yes. to heal you, to do great yes. and mighty yes. things inside of your life. And Amen. so I am just so thankful. And I know, I knew two weeks ago that what the enemy, he knew what was happening and our announcement we're getting ready to make. And I knew, and I was laughing. Even the nurse said to me, why are you laughing? I was like, because the devil thinks he's got me, but he doesn't. Yes. He's trying to distract us from what God has, but God's got greater, awesome things in store. And I knew that the enemy was just really mad because the Bible talks about don't despise small beginnings. See, 14 years ago, we started the church at our house, um, and it was a small beginning we started with just a group of friends I remember tra telling Tracy and Mike we we used to walk in the morning then anyway and we we were like hey we really feel like God's calling us to start a church and we were both working full-time for a church and and then God just started just doing some amazing things and I want to encourage you this morning because you know a lot of us we have some small beginnings it might God might have been challenging you to start a business or start something new or take a new job or you know just step out on on a podcast or something new I want to tell you right now that don't despise the small beginnings yeah because God will grow it. And just obey and take that step of faith because as we did 14 years ago, we, we knew that God had something and he had something awesome for us in store. And it's been a long 14 years, hasn't yes, it? It has. So, Pastor Chris? You guys ready for the announcement? Yeah. Here it is. We got to build it! it. Yeah, high five we somebody. We got it. We got it. Don't we leave got them hanging. Woohoo! We got a building. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what to do with my hands, right? <laughs> this is awesome. We got so here's the awesome thing. Um we have we have a signed offer. We have secured uh, lending. We have worked through some negotiations. We've come in agreement with the building owners, and uh, we are in a period of time, a little less than two months, uh, before we close on this property. And uh, and we're going to be stepping into 2020, a new year, yeah. a new decade, Woo! to a new season yeah! for Epic Church. Um, and so here's the cool thing, man. As she, as she said, 14 years ago, we were in our house for a couple of months. We went from there to uh, the Courtyard Marriott for a little over a year. From there to the Dewburns Arena, we were there for seven years. From the Dewburns to the Best Western, we've been here for coming up on almost six years. And uh, we're stepping in, in this next season, stepping from here into our first permanent home Amen. Amen. in the history of yeah. Epic. It's so it's exciting. Super exciting. Um, and so we actually have some architectural renderings that we'd like to show you of the space. Uh, we want to show you some pictures of what it looks like and, uh, and, and what it's going to look like when we move in day, uh, day one. Here's some shots of, uh, of the exterior. There's an educational wing off to the side. We'll talk about that in a second. Here's the uh, entryway where we're heading in. Yeah. I think that's you right there. <laughs> this is the inside, the worship space. And, uh, and, and, and that's the close-up of, of the worship space. That's me on stage right there. 
And uh, and so it's exciting. And we're going to actually share this stuff out on social. You'll be able to see it. Uh, But there's some stuff that's not pictured in these. This kind of gives you a quick overview. But there's some stuff that we want to share with you that's not pictured that's even more exciting than just that. Uh, There's some other stuff. Go ahead, babe. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, we've been sharing vision for the past year. And um, we've just been praying because we don't want to just have a worship place. But we wanted everything all in one. And God is just so faithful. And um, over the next couple weeks, we'll share with you the story. We don't have time enough allotted today to share everything, but it's a miracle. I mean, this is just absolutely a miracle. And um, I know you guys know we were looking in the Canton area and nothing really showed up. So we went uh, just about a mile further and um, this building was there and it wasn't even on the market. And uh, we'll tell you the miracle because that's a longer story and we'll tell you all about it. Um, But this wing right here actually has, um, on the top level, it has 120 seated um, like fellowship hall that we'll be able to have our own luncheons. Can you believe that, right? We'll be able, it has a kitchen inside of the um, kitchen area. It's got a pantry. The number one phone call that we get at the church office is for food. And we'll be able to actually help feed the community and have a food bank and be able just to reach out and just to love on families and people who might be struggling. And then it's going to actually have our offices. So we'll move from the the offsite offices we have now, we'll move in there. And then it has some other um, rooms up top that we'll be using for different ministry things. And then on the um, bottom level, it is actually has, it's all going to be for our next generation. Um, It's got nurseries. It's got kids' rooms for toddlers. It's got rooms for first through third grade and fourth and fifth grade. And then it's got um, a junior, a middle school room, youth room for just middle school. And then it has another youth room that would hold about 60 teenagers. And so that is completely separate. And so we're so excited. Um, Just to kind of give you some idea, right next door to us is a middle school. I mean, an elementary school. Right across from the elementary school is a middle school. Right down the street, literally cross over the light, there is a high school, and then there's a college. Um, if you kind of recognize the buildings up, it's we're showing you renders because it does need a lot of work right now, and um, we're going to do a lot of remodeling. Um, but it's about a mile from here. You can actually stand in that parking lot and see the Natty Bow sign. Mm-hmm. So that kind of gives you guys an idea. It's not far at all from here. So we're, we're totally excited. Some of the things, just to give you a taste, we're going to um, do a lot of community events. We want to do, like, um, movies on the lawn. We want to do Easter egg hunts and bring them back to the church. We're, we're um, so excited. Uh, we want to reach the businesses. There's a lot of businesses and entrepreneurs out there. We want, we want our building to be used used to unconventional ways. We don't want to be a building that's just open on Sundays. We want to be a building for the community where people right, can right, right. come and, and just learn yeah. about life and learn learn how to start a business. Learn, And if they're business owners, which we have a lot of business owners in the church, we'll be able to come together and to help each other, to build each other's business and to reach more people and to help our community. So we are, to- I could talk all day. We are totally excited about this. There's a miracle in the story and we're going to be able to share that but um, I'm going to hand it back over to you because I'll talk all day. This is so super cool and and here's the crazy thing a year ago we we started this giving campaign not knowing what was available to us and we said hey we feel God leading us to to raise a million dollars to open the door for finding a permanent space and guess what God did? He opened the door to find a permanent space. He did it. Won't he do it? As they say. That's right. um, and so and it's, it's awesome, man. It's so cool just to see the doors that God has opened. And, uh, and so here's what, we, what we're hoping for and what we need. We, we want 500000 of that million to get in there, to, to secure it and close, uh, to re- renovate so it's going to be epic when we step into it. Um, and, and then also one of, our, one of the things that we want to do is uh, we want to purchase a, a van, uh, a van for the church, uh, because we know we're moving just outside of this community. It's not far, uh, but there's many, uh, many of us in this room, part of the epic family, that are walkers that walk to the church. And so we want to continue to reach the community that we're in as we move into the community that w- where we're going. And so that church van will be uh, hopefully available to go make pickups and drive and, and continue to reach not just this community, not just that community, but all the communities of, of the city. Yeah. 
And so uh, that, that's a part of the vision as we step into it. And, uh, and so it's exciting. I, I was talking to a guy the other day, and uh, he, he said, what church are you part of? I said, Epic Church. And he says, Epic, that's a cool name. Does that stand for every person in the city? And I said, it does now. <laughs> I was like, that's good. good. So it does now. And so Epic, uh, it, we, we've been called Epic Baltimore uh, since our inception, and so I think that really continues to be the heart. Uh, even though we're moving from this, uh, this community of Donald Heights over to, to this area, which is in, in Dundalk, I still think this is the heart of the church, is to reach every person in the city uh, and even beyond for Jesus. And, uh, and so that's not just going to continue, but it's going to accelerate. I'm telling you right now, we are strapped to a rocket ship that is about to take off. <laughs> This is awesome. Amen. Amen. And so, um, so thank you guys for being with us on this yeah. journey. Uh, who's excited for, for this next season, yeah. right? This is awesome. This is awesome. Woo. And so here's, here's the cool thing. This is the second best announcement just today. This is the second best thing that's happening today because we still get to do the best thing today, which is baptize some people because they have been changed They've been brand new in Jesus Christ, and so we get to celebrate that today. That's even better, right? Yeah. Happy birthday, me. After, after baptism, we're going to have Ian come out, who's our campaign coordinator. He's going to share with you guys some of the numbers and some of the process and all that stuff. And so that's going to be at the end of our time together. Uh, but who's ready to baptize some people this morning? Yeah. Man, let's make some noise. Let's do it. Let's, do it. let's get some Woo. baptizers in here. Let's go. Is my I was so lost, I was so lost, but now I'm found. Yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, preacher man, let's take a walk down by the river. Let the holy water wash over me. Cause now that I've been delivered, I want the whole world to know that I'm a new man now. And it's only by God's grace I'm standing here today. If you're feeling what I'm feeling, let me hear you say it. Over my shoulder, I can see the life he saved me from. Every time I look back over my shoulder, I can see the life he saved me from. Thank God. Hey, church, now you see this little light of mine. Well, my question is a simple one. Who's next? Come get in line. I'm talking one by, I'm talking one by, one by one. I'm gonna testify. Pastor, do you profess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? I want you to hold your nose for me. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. If you're a new creation, amen. If you got that feel good in your soul, that hope that won't let go. If you don't want to feel it, let me hear you say amen. publicly profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Over my shoulder, I can see the life he saved me from. Every time I look back over my shoulder, I can see the life he saved me from. Thank God. Yeah. 
you, prof you profess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. I now baptize your name in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Deeper than fear, the time is profess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Your Lord and Savior? Yes. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
baptize your name in the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I do. This for me, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus is your Lord and personal Savior? Yes. Come on. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You've got your reasons, but I hold your peace. You've been on lockdown and I hold Publicly profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Sure do. All right. Yes, hold your nose for me. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. publicly profess Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior? Yes, I do. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
will only become part of the story and know what you want. What in the light will only become part of the story and know what you want. What in the light will only become part of the story and know what you want. publicly profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. You hold your nose for me. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. publicly profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I do. Put your nose for me. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to see you Baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord and Savior. Yes. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
publicly profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, I do. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord and Savior. Yes, I do. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Do you publicly profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Hold your nose for me. I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. publicly profess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Yes. You know for me? I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord Spirit of the 
Wow, man, it is so awesome to be a part of a church that's life-giving and that's just experiencing freedom in people's lives. It's awesome, awesome to see it. It's awesome to experience it. And it's all because of what Jesus did for us 2,000 years ago. Lord, we're just so grateful, God, for a move that's happening within the Epic Church family. We thank you so much. We bless you. We praise you. In Jesus' name. Today, if you're like first time here and you're like, what is going on? Um, this is what we do every Sunday. We party. I'm not going to lie. We want to invite you to come back. But if today you haven't made that decision or maybe let's say you made that decision to serve Jesus and put Jesus first and say, you know what? I want a relationship with the Lord. We actually have some people over by the exit sign. If you want to make your way over there, we actually have a little um, devotion for you and just some a gift for you so that way you can continue your growth in the Lord. So we just want to encourage you to head over there and uh, meet someone. They'll pray for you over there on the uh, right underneath the exit sign. All right, so um, without no further ado, I want to hand it over to Mr. Ian. He's over the campaign for the one. So can we just give it up for Ian right now? A lot of party going over here. I like it. It's like New Year's Eve. I love it. I'm going to take, I didn't get a mic, so I just had to take his. So everybody, what an amazing Sunday. Was that awesome? Let's, you know. I mean, how do, how do Billy and I get to follow that up, you know? Huge announcement, baptisms. So almost two years ago, Pastor Lori and Pastor Chris gave us this vision of this new building that they were going to get. And Pastor Lori, she's like, we had a dream. And she was like, we're going to get the kids ministry. We're going to get a youth ministry. There's going to be a place. There's going to be a coffee area. There's going to be a place for business owners. And guess what? God gave us a building. You know? It was going to be a two-year campaign. And God said, nope, I'm going to do it in a year. Right? Okay, so there's still a lot of work yet to be done, and we set out a goal to raise a million dollars, and we are just shy of $250,000, okay? So what I'm asking you here, and I've got three messages, or three asks for you. On January 12th, that's the first one, in the new year, we're going to have a huge event after the second service at the building, because I'm guessing everybody wants to see it, right? Okay, so everybody reserve that time for yourselves for us, for Epic Church to see this new building, okay? January 12th, remember that date. We'll, we'll talk a lot more about it. Second thing is, everybody here, members of the church, we committed to raising a million dollars and we ask everybody to dig deep, to, to find us, to get us to that half a million dollar mark so we can do those renovations. You know, we're asking for everybody to, to find in their hearts to give so we can get to that half a million dollar mark and get to the closing and do the renovation so we can build that vision out that God gave Pastor Lori and Pastor Chris, okay? And the third thing is, is if you're new to this church in the last year or a couple years and you didn't, you weren't part of the capital campaign, the For the One campaign, that you sit down and meet and ask questions and give what you feel led by God in your heart to give. So I wanna thank everybody for their generosity. I wanna thank you forgiving and believing and praying for this for the one campaign because God answered our prayers and this is the you know like somebody said to us said to me at the beginning before in the morning this is probably the last time we're going to set up this mobile baptism okay that epic's going to have a home that there's going to be a place I don't know where it is you know on the stage we haven't designed that yet right but that we'll be able to do these baptisms and we won't have to set it up and break it down and set it up and break it down every year and every Sunday. And isn't that amazing? So I just want to thank God for that. And Billy? Awesome. Thanks so much, Ian. Real appreciate it. Let's give it up for Ian one more time. For the one. Got some great things happening. Let's make sure we get to 500,000. Be great. So um, we just want to let you know, if you are new to Epic and you're like, man, this is an awesome church. I want to know more about it. Next Sunday, we're having a uh, lunch for you, a free lunch right after the 11 o'clock service from 1230 to 130. If you've been here for the last couple months and you still want to find out more about it, please, next Sunday from 1230 to 130, please come and check that out. Also, we are having a Christmas Eve service everybody say christmas eve. christmas eve we're having a service right here at 5 30. we'd love for you to bring your family your friends your neighbors whoever 
you want to bring, please bring. It's going to be a candlelight. It's a really great um, time. Um, so those are the two announcements. But, you know, I, I want to just share something, just what I'm feeling. You know, I know the Ravens won the Super Bowl like 10 years ago or something like that. And we're looking forward, like we're going seven. And we're looking forward to going probably to another Super Bowl. But there's no better feeling of what I feel right now. Just an absolute, just... Um, emotions that are running through me right now is just so exciting to see my cousin Brittany get baptized, to see Jeff, and to see a lot of our people um, that went through our small groups, Zach, and just different people. Like, just, it's, it's exciting, man, what people are giving their lives to Jesus Christ and how Jesus is coming alive in their heart. It's just so exciting. And if, if, like I said, if this is your first time, if you want to give your life to the Lord, or if you have given your life to the Lord, go over to the exit sign. Please connect. If this is your first time, we also have a next steps table out there. This is, and we have a gift to give you. So that's not the only thing. We're not here just to give you Jesus. We're here to give you also a gift out there. If this is your first time, please go to the next deck tables. Receive the gift. Um, if it's your second time, we also have a gift too. Go over there, sign in, and make sure they give you that gift as well. So also, we would just want to thank everyone um, for their gratitude um, and thank everyone for their generosity within Epic Church. Um, you guys have been faithful and giving, and we couldn't do this without your, your giving. So um, just want to encourage you. We have a text to give. We have an online to give. And then we also have a tithe and an offering box over here to give. As Pastor Chris said in the DuBerns, drop a dollar and holler and um, all that good stuff. So we appreciate you guys so much. I'm just going to say a blessing over you before you leave. And I just pray that you guys go with the peace and the freedom of Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you so much for an amazing service. We thank you, God, for just great things on the horizon for Epic Church. We thank you, God, what you're doing in the lives of your people here at Epic, Father God. People are coming alive. People are being set free. People are walking out their promise and walking out their purpose with Christ Jesus. And we thank you for that, Lord. We just ask a blessing over your people as they go this week throughout um, their life and th that they can bring the reason for the season, which is Jesus Christ, the birth of Christ. Let them go in the love and the peace of Jesus. And everyone said, amen. God bless you guys. Love you so much. Oh, prison shake at the sound of Jesus' name. Lives made whole, hearts awake at the sound of Jesus' name.